Many people today use sound systems that are powered, speakers that have their own power in them, which is a good thing for a lot of people, and some people still use passive speakers that require separate amplifiers. So let's say we have two speakers for our main speakers, and they are similar to these, or maybe even the same speakers as these. These are QSC K10s. QSC makes lots of different models, but we'll use these as a reference. Most powered speakers have a switch on the back that allows you to filter off the low frequencies or a menu where you can go in and set a high pass filter or a filter for the speaker, whether it is being used with or without a subwoofer. Now that we have all the low frequencies chopped off of our top speakers, we are able to produce even more clear volume with the top speakers because the deep bass is not wasting that power. Now we're going to go to an aux mix or an aux output and we're going to set up that output to feed audio to our subwoofers. Hit the main mix. Let's go, let's use uh, aux 6. I like yellow. Let's rename aux 6 subs. All right, good. Now let's turn this up, not zero dB. Holy crap, might blow the windows out. Just kidding. Let's set it right there. What we need to do next is up here, the pre-fader. We do not want pre-fader for this aux output. We want post-fader. The reason is we are going to decide what channels get to go to the subwoofers. And when we look at this mix, we get to see all the channels that we can run into the subs. Let's set the kick drum. We'll put it around zero. Snare drum, no. Snare drums do not reproduce low frequencies worthy of a subwoofer. Neither does a hi-hat. The first mounted tom, there's no way a mounted tom is going to produce low frequencies for a subwoofer, so they shouldn't go there. A floor tom certainly does, and this drummer has two floor toms, so we'll put them both in the sub. Overhead mic, definitely not. How about the bass guitar? Absolutely. Same amount as the kick drum for starters. The horn key, no. This keyboard, we don't know what he's going to play. He could maybe play some sounds that have really good low end. So let's put those in the subs, but maybe not as much as the rest of the stuff. Guitar, no. Vocals, no. So there we go. Now we have everything that we want to go to the subs. But another beauty of setting up subs like this is that none of the vocal mics are going to go into those subwoofers. I hope that you have a high pass filter set on your vocals to eliminate a lot of the popping P sounds and T's and S's. Those that are always going to make the microphone produce a really nasty explosive sound on the low end. If you don't have that filtered out, it's just going to be really nasty, horrible sound. Plus, if you have those going to a subwoofer, ooh, bad news. Let's go back to our main speakers and go to our parametric EQ and let's turn this off for a moment and listen to the fidelity. Now this is the band playing. This is full range. We're not filtering any lows off. Let's just listen to the mix. Let's listen to what it sounds like with the high pass filter on. A lot of lows are cut off. What if we were to cut the lows off even more? Ridiculously high. However, that shows you what the high pass filter will do.
Let's listen to 85 Hertz. Let's go back to our sub aux. Let's listen to that. We don't have any EQ on it. Let's listen to what the audio sounds like going into the subs. Now, interesting, you're probably thinking, well, that's not, that, that doesn't sound like a subwoofer. And that's because all of our channels that we chose to run into this aux subwoofer output is full range. It's up to the crossover on the powered sub to filter out all the frequencies above the sub frequency, the crossover point on the sub. Now, if you have older subs that are not powered, or they're new subs and they're not powered, but you have a separate power amplifier, you're going to need processing in the amp to cut off all the mids and highs, or you're going to need a separate crossover connected to the amp to allow you to filter off all those highs. If you don't have any of that, you could get by beautifully with the EQ on this sub aux output. As discussed in a previous video, HPF is high pass filter. It passes highs, but it cuts lows. The opposite of that is an LPF, low pass filter. The low pass filter passes lows, but it cuts highs, and that's what we want to use. So let's turn the low pass filter on. Let's set it to 24 dB per octave because we want it to be really, really steep. And let's roll that all the way down to about 85 hertz. Again, let's make it exactly 85 hertz. Five, enter. There you go. So now what we have is we have the aux output has all the frequencies chopped off except 85 hertz and below. Now let's listen to what would be going to the subwoofer. Nice low end, and that's going to your subs. The cutoff frequency that we're using for the subwoofers is 85 hertz. Again, that means only frequencies from 85 hertz and lower get to go to the subs. That same frequency is what we're using for a cutoff for your main speakers. The main speakers only get frequencies as low as 85 hertz. Anything lower than that, they don't get. Everything above 85 hertz, they do. So that's our crossover point, the frequency at which the top speakers are crossed over to the subwoofers and vice versa. So that's how we set up the crossover point between our top speakers and the subs. Another nice thing that's very convenient to do is when you're running the sound, you would always want the balance between your subwoofers and your top speakers to be consistent. Once you set or once you raise the subwoofer level to your liking based on the volume of the subs relative to your top speakers, it would be nice that if at some point we want to raise or lower the volume of the mains, wouldn't it be nice if the subwoofer master would also be raised or lowered accordingly. So what we should do is, let's go to VCAs. VCA1, let's use VCA1. We're gonna name this, let's just call us, in the old days they used to call it gas, that was the master. And let's make this um, red, that's the gas. What this is, is not an audio fader. I've, I've gone into great detail in other videos about this. What we're going to do is we're going to assign the mains 
and the sub. So here's the sub, aux 6, and we're going to assign the mains to that as well. This will become our new master. Once the main master fader level is set and the subwoofer level is set to where we like it, okay, we're not going to go in there and constantly change the sub master or the main master. All we're going to do is we're going to go to the VCA for the mains. That's plural. That would be your top speakers and your sub. So when we raise this remote control fader, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remotely raise and lower the master fader. So let's lower this uh, 9.7 dB. Let's go look at the mains for a second. Ah, see that little ghost there? That little ghost of a fader? That's visually letting you know that that fader is controlled by a VCA. We will see the same exact thing if we look at the subs. There you go. So if you raise the gas a little bit more, let's say, let's just do like negative 2.6. When we go look at the mains and the subs, we'll see a little ghost, just a little bit, okay? When we raise the BCA back up to unity gain or zero dB, then what we will see when we look at the mains and the subs, no ghost. So let me reiterate, that VCA is not an audio fader. You won't see any meters moving in time of the music. It's just a remote control for whatever we assigned to it. And in this case, we assigned the master for the mains and the subwoofer aux to that VCA. And we called it gas. Now this is a little off topic, but I'm gonna go to VCA2 and I'm gonna name this all mon. And we'll make this, um, well, we'll leave it green. That's all monitors. Let's assign all of our monitor masters to that. Not six, because that's sub, that's not a monitor. But all of our five monitor mixes on stage, whether they're in ears or floor monitor speakers, whatever, we now have one fader that is in control of all the masters. So if you have somebody causing feedback, perhaps the worst thing about feedback for a sound engineer is that we don't usually know who's causing it or what's causing it. What we do know is that we need to get rid of it as fast as we can. So you would be in your main mix probably, you'd be mixing along, everything's fine, all of a sudden, whatever, you immediately go over to VCA and you lower this just a little bit. And that would lower all of your masters. If we look down here at all of our auxes, the aux masters, you can see, let's, pre let's, let's pretend that these were all turned up some. You can see that the VCA has lowered all of those. Very nice feature. You need to look into using VCAs. Think of it as a remote control. 